Hey everyone, it is episode 15 and I am so close to finishing this reptile enclosure. I just have a few more small loose ends to take care of and it might, might at this rate be done in two weeks. I talked about this in the last video. You can see that that plywood is sticking ever so slightly above the slip. So that very thin edge has no danger of breaking when the box is placed down. All the weight is gonna be on that plywood, which is transferring straight through into the side of the box. I've cut this piece of the board off, but now this end grain is proud of this long grain, obviously. So, come up with this. It's a, a hardwood board that is screwed into the housing of the router. And then I've got a big bits on there. And I should be able to run that board flat against the, the long grain and then bring the bits in. And that should cut this flush. I've seen something similar to this done before for cutting dowels, but I haven't seen it done for this. But I'm pretty sure it'll work. We'll, we'll find out. Where are my safety glasses? That's perfect. It's actually working really well. This long board allows me to, let me see if I can show this. Because of the orientation of this box and this board, I can use my forearm to push this into the timber. And with the clamped, that puts all of my weight essentially against that, this piece, which is holding it flush. So this is working great. Well, I have to say, that worked amazing. The box test fitted. I'm happy with it. Um, I put that little piece on top. That's going to be the lid. And the client has specifically asked for wide gaps on either side. There's going to be two latches on either side, and then you might want to put a, a padlock in there. So that's it. Uh, but he specifically asked for 15 to 20 mil on either side. Next up is going to be to cut the opening where the piece of perspex will go in so you can see inside this box. But it is 10 to 1 and I need to go eat something. A quick update on the celery top shop stuff that I talked about in the last video. I put out a Facebook, well, a number of Facebook marketplace ads and an Instagram post and I had a total sum of zero responses. And it's so weird, everyone I talk to is always so surprised that I've had nothing and I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I mean, in the podcast last week, Joey was talking about how he made up these end grain boards, put them up for $200 each, and he sold all of them. There was a handful of them. He sold all of them within a day. And here I am trying to sell stuff that is cheap. It is, it is really cheap. And just no one's interested. Like, I don't know if I'm making the ads wrong, or if I'm putting it in the wrong category, or what it is, but like they've had like, nine, 10 clicks. So they are appearing, but people are just, just not interested. Anyway, I don't know what I'm doing wrong at this stage. I thought I'd done my research. I thought I'd come up with products that were quite interesting. I've lowered the price to the point where they are 
getting to the point where like your big box stores, I'm competing with them. That's how low the price is. And I just, I don't know what to do next. I don't know what to do next to move this product. I'm not gonna worry about this. That was last year's adventure. You know, 2024 is a different year, but it's just, yeah, I, I get frustrated when I hear other people having so much success on Facebook Marketplace and I, and I just cannot crack it. Now that I'm nearing the end of all of my commissions up until this point, I'm starting to focus more on the videos. So I'm working on the Earn project and it's so nice to be back to editing videos again, trying to make content for my main channel. I often laugh when I think back to 2015, 2016, where I used to do a, a, a project and a video every week. I mean, admittedly, they were relatively smaller projects and less complex than the ones now. But I used to put out content on my main channel with projects every week. Okay, so to make this work, I'm gonna drill some 20 mil wide holes using a spade bit in the four corners. And I'll join those up with a pattern bit. I'll uh, clamp a board down between the two and then run a pattern bit through. Same around that side and that will cut open a hole. This whole router handle thing, it's awesome. Yeah, outside of that specific use case that I had for it before, just being able to have this extra handle popping out to the side is amazing. Is it Festool who does it? I think someone has a bit of a, a, a side handle. It is so much more comfortable and it feels like I have so much more control using the, the palm router. That's an awesome find. All right, I've put the box in the bottom of the enclosure. I, I need to switch directions now and pull out all of these wider boards and then I've been storing. I had to go buy an extra piece, unfortunately, because I made the box a bit bigger, but this thick ash I need to pull out and get that glued up onto a, a panel. I have a bottle of glue somewhere in this workshop and I have no idea where it is. I am, I am losing my mind. Always put things back where they belong, kids. So you don't question your sanity. Oh, come on, this is, what did I do with this? I am legitimately questioning my reality I am off to Bunnings now to get some last minute bits and bobs for this project this should be the last bit of spending that I do for this reptile enclosure Hey buddy, how you going? I just got in and got started this morning. I haven't been filming anything just because, man, I'm so close to getting this done. I just want to get it out the door. So I have cut the back hole for the vent, similar to those ones. Again, didn't bother filming that. And I've also finished gluing up this panel and I had to do a bit of work on the centerpiece here just to um, plane it down. Now I'm gonna give the whole thing a sand and then get started on attaching it. This is the bit of this box that I've been dreading. 
because I'm not particularly good with hinges. Thought I'd share this trick that I've just been playing with and it's worked really well. So, you set up your hinge, you need to center that, uh, those holes. You can't use a self-centering bit because the, the, the stock of that hinge is too thin. So the self-centering will just bounce around. I've just tried using a uh, countersink bit, dropping it in, spinning it slowly, oh sorry, spinning it lightly, so spin it full speed, but then just hold it lightly. And then that will slowly drop in and self-center. And uh, let's see if I can focus on this. You can see there, that's the hole that it will create. So now when I come back with my drill bit, it will just fall into the center. And those holes are perfectly lined up. It's kind of taking the idea of a self-centering bit. And when I say self-centering bit, I mean one of these. But because they're, the amount of angle that they have on the top is so shallow, it takes that same principle and it just uses something that's got a lot more angle to it and makes a centered hole in, in the bottom of that table, if that makes sense. So here's an interesting one, and maybe this is a bit of a PSA for all the business owners out there. That high chair that I made a while ago, I made the seat portion a little bit thinner than the seat that I'd made before, but it wasn't so thin that I thought it was gonna be an issue. And I had my daughter test it and it was fine, but it really was made with the assumption that it would be a child sitting on it. I've just received a text from the client to say that their mum has sat on it and it's broken. Now, the mum's okay, thankfully, and the client isn't, annoyed or anything, but I had assumed that we all understood that this was made for kids. Now, maybe I should have been more, and I don't want to say transparent because I wasn't, I wasn't hiding this from anyone, but maybe I should have been more verbal and done more due diligence and, and said that outright. And you know, I think about all the warning labels that you see on, on products, this is why. And as I say, the clients were cool about this. I've got no ill feeling towards them. I hope they feel the same on their end. But I think next time, if there's any of those potential issues, I'm just gonna talk about it. Regardless, I'm, I'm gonna make mention of it. The plan from here is to take another piece of Vic Ash and then glue that across this board, leaving the two um, ends to still be able to fit inside these grooves. So that way, yes, it will still be weak on the sides, but you'll have this big chunk of more solid material so that if the person, someone heavy, does sit on the edge, it won't be as likely to snap because it's gonna be a bit of a chunkier piece. All right, with that lid fitting, I am pretty much stoked and relaxed because now the rest of the project, as long as I don't make any simple fuck ups, should be straightforward. So I've got to cut some, some mesh for this cutout. I've got to cut the perspex for the front. I'm about to start cutting the grooves for the wiring. I need to sand the top of the cabinet. I need to make a small cut, circular cutout in one of these, each one of these panels. I've got to make some feet. And then, oh, then I've, got to, I've got to finish the box with some linseed oil. And then I think I'm done. I think I might be done. I'm so excited. <laughs> 